Hello, so we can um, start this uh, session. Uh, my name is uh, uh, Vasilios Zagas uh, from uh, SimForward, uh, um, engineering company in Athens, Greece. And uh, we've um, organized this webinar in cooperation with uh, Midas and FX um, in order to try to, to, to throw some attention into uh, Midas and FX for uh, FEM analysis in SIP building and uh, SIP design projects. Uh, here we today we present um, a project we have done, which was part of a paper we presented last uh, month, and uh, we will go through the steps uh, that we have uh, taken to um, to do a preliminary um, uh, hydrodynamic analysis to derive pressures on on a on a house shape, and then um, further um, uh, static and and nonlinear analysis that took place. Uh, um, on, on the how. Uh, I will go through the presentation and at the end of the presentation we will have a short uh, look um, on the actual uh, uh, Midas NFX platform and uh, its uh, um, integration with our um, uh, SIP, SIP structural modeler uh, with VFF. So, um, through the presentation, we'll go. Um, uh, we will uh, have a, a short introduction, um, a note on the integration uh, platform, uh, how we we deal with it, uh, what is the modeling approach, and uh, the description of our workflow, the workflow that we have defined according to our needs, analysis and results, and uh, a, a conclusion. So just to, to introduce the idea, um, so SIP design and uh, SIP building uh, refers to, to complex uh, uh, complex products. Uh, SIPs are inherently uh, very complex structures uh, uh, included by many systems. Uh, so it is uh, evident that different groups and teams uh, need uh, to, to be there to handle specific tasks. Uh, so this makes it necessary for information to be handed down from, from one group to another and we have uh, um, a, a natural uh, cooperation is needed between teams. And uh, it's very often, especially in, in, uh, in the SIP building industry and in SIP design projects that uh, results come after an, an iterative process and uh, you should very often go back, uh, redefine um, your product and um, move forward to the next step. So um, we, we have seen that collaborative design is uh, really gaining popularity and importance nowadays uh, in, in all these uh, uh, complex products industries and of course demand for a streamlined workflow. Um, people tend to, to uh, to ask for a streamlined workflow in order to be able to, to move uh, uh, from one uh, software to another. So um, the, the, main, uh, the main domains within the, the, SIP, within the SIP design project, um, starting from conceptual design uh, and then uh, we've moved to the basic design, uh, which is then uh, uh, documented by the detailed design that it's actually one step before the production. Uh, but uh, throughout this process we also have uh, nowadays uh, the, the advanced engineering um, that is taking place which is uh, something which is related to what we talk today. So uh, mainly uh, simulation processes. The project management of course with this also has to do with the, uh, with the kind of workflow nowadays uh, due to the to the volume of, uh, of work and the volume of models used in the industry and lastly the, the documentation that has to be produced uh, throughout the design uh, stages. So why we, we, are, um, we are looking at it? Uh, nowadays the, the license costs for modeling and analysis software are a very important factor. Uh, we are not anymore in the, uh, in the era where uh, people do not uh, pay attention to uh, to the licensing costs. Uh, it is a very important factor, and uh, it is it's become 
evident that uh, the model of dedicated software software for uh, specific functions um, is not anymore the, the, the best way forward. Um, we have seen that um, three to five license softwares they're used on average during the entire uh, course of a design project and of course uh, this should, should throw our attention to the uh, compatibility between the software uh, because this will compromise our final workflow and the delivery of the, of the project. Um, Due to that, we can see that several companies they are resorting to a, to a one-code solution or one integrated platform solutions. They try to reduce the license costs by uh, trying to, to get uh, um, integrated packages. And also, uh, through that, they, of course, try to simplify the workflow to a great, great extent. I mean, what, what drives this demand at the moment is, the, the, of course, the current state of the market and also the expected effects through, through using uh, CAE uh, um, solutions. Um, we can see that the current state of the market is the increased cost, the, the, the high quality which is requested, and, of course, a short product cycle uh, nowadays. And through utilizing CAE, of, we try to, to cut down um, um, the cost. Uh, to improve the quality, on the other hand, and also have a very short development period uh, as it's requested. So a few, um, uh, a few words about the integration platform. Um, the integration platform uh, that we are uh, utilizing here is uh, Midas and FX. Uh, so I'm, I'm sure um, uh, most of you have uh, um, had uh, have an idea about uh, Midas and FX already. Um, so I'll just go through it quickly. We have uh, Midas and FX is an integrated uh, um, um, pre-processing, uh, post-processing, and solver platform uh, utilizing a powerful preprocessor. Uh, you will also see at the end of this uh, session where we'll have uh, some. Uh, hands-on work that uh, the, the workflow is very intuitive. Uh, we have a powerful model cleanup through uh, modeling functions uh, and also sophisticated post-processing graphics to, to enable uh, comprehensive reporting um, at the end of your project. Um, uh, another advantage is the uh, high performance. Uh, at the moment, uh, Midas and FX is one of the quickest uh, uh, um, auto measures in, in the industry and supports parallel processing uh, by also uh, um, supporting high quality uh, element messing. Um, and at the end, of course, we, what is, uh, um, let's say, also very important is the uh, multidisciplinary analysis solutions and the solvers offered within the package. So there is a, a wide variety of, of, uh, of solvers, uh, starting from linear static analysis and uh, going up to, uh, let's say, complex uh, CFD flow analysis, even for uh, uh, dedicated uh, problems like uh, free surface for marine applications. Um, so if, if you've also seen the, the latest uh, Midas and FX webinar um, uh, release of 2015, you will see many new features that have been included and uh, something which is not new but it's uh, still very um, uh, up to date is the topology optimization uh, which is um, um, optimization analysis uh, linked to static and dynamic uh, solvers. So the, uh, the, the whole philosophy between the uh, integration platform is, um, is trying to, 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 to cut down uh, the time and the cost uh, starting from the design and uh, going to the actual production of a, of a, of a product. Uh, so here you can see the um, uh, traditional versus the, um, the design uh, using uh, CAE uh, technology. And uh, you can see that uh, the, the whole uh, philosophy lines on the uh, um, quick uh, performance evaluation starting from the uh, design on the same platform and then uh, going through the CA process 
and having an improved uh, uh, improved product within the design stage before going to the production planning uh, and uh, thus reducing the time and costs by almost uh, 60 to 70 percent. Um, so um, now we can uh, start with the uh, case study. Uh, we had uh, our marine case study and the, the modeling approach. So we started with the um, uh, with a with a tugboat. This is a 70-ton boiler tool uh, tugboat uh, uh, coming from um, uh, from a client project. And um, what we have tried to do here is that uh, uh, assess the hydrodynamic loading uh, of the uh, uh, on the hull and especially on the aft part of the of the tugboat where we have the uh, the so-called azimuth uh, thrusters for the propulsion and uh, where, where the structure is uh, quite complex and the, the thrusters are hanging from the uh, from the uh, structure um, Lastly, you will see in this presentation that we have also uh, run a collision uh, analysis uh, between the aft part of the of the tug uh, to a, to an offshore uh, column installation in order to assess the impact and uh, also to um, uh, to assess the possible deformation on the uh, on the on the shafting that um, exists on this aft part for the propulsion. So starting, we we had to um, of course we have to import our model. Um, we have used a given um, um, hull geometry. Uh, so Midas uh, has the ability to import uh, um, um, a variety of uh, uh, geometrical formats. Uh, one of them and the most used at the moment is the IGS one, and we have used it to import it into Midas NFX. Um, so, uh, in that case, we will start with the uh, setting up for the hydrodynamic uh, analysis. And uh, to do that, uh, one would have to um, uh, would have to actually convert. Uh, we have to import his model. Uh, model coming into an IGS will probably consist of uh, different uh, faces and, and surfaces, and uh, or possibly also lines. Um, so one will have to convert uh, his um, his geometry into a B-rep solid in order to be able to uh, to perform a boolean operation that we will see uh, uh, below. Um, so the uh, we found that um, Midas and FX could effectively handle uh, this. Um, uh, this problem, uh, this geometrical problem, by uh, specific uh, functions, allowing us to uh, to uh, stitch the surfaces together, and uh, at the end uh, um, bind them into a B-rep solid. Um, uh, so as I said before, uh, having a big B-rep solid now uh, allows us into creating uh, our fluid domain. Uh, uh, very uh, easily by just uh, uh, utilizing the, the uh, Boolean operation with images and effects. So we have uh, started with creating uh, our fluid domain, uh, which is uh, let's say a critical process uh, for the for starting of the hydrodynamic analysis in in, in this part. Um, we have. Um, Used uh, the the modeling tab of Windows and FX, and we have uh, created uh, a solid uh, box uh, where we have uh, um, given the appropriate dimensions according to our hydrodynamic needs. So we have um, um, a size, we have an, an air domain, and we have an, a sea domain as well, where we have uh, split them at the uh, at the um, uh, design uh, water line. So we, you can see that uh, the, the size of the air domain is around 110 meters uh, times 30 uh, times uh, 10 meters high, and uh, the sea domain uh, is uh, almost uh, is the same uh, um, length and, and, and uh, breadth, and but we have a bigger uh, uh, depth to it uh, in order to um, 
to, to resolve uh, problems related to the hydrodynamic part. So uh, you can see that uh, after we have um, we have our, our B rep solid hull and our B rep solid um, uh, domain, we can subtract by building operation uh, the one from the other, and uh, thus create uh, the fluid domain. So having uh, defined our fluid domain. Uh, um, we can either uh, start um, defining boundary conditions, or uh, we can before that we can try, try start experimenting with uh, with the meshing um, uh, parameters. So uh, since meshing parameters are very important at this moment, uh, uh, we will have a quick look at that. Um, what we have utilized in uh, Midas and FX is the uh, um, the available auto measure and which is uh, very quick and robust and uh, it is uh, let's say um, advisable that uh, when starting a project to uh, always uh, go through the, uh, the um, uh, go uh, first as a first iteration uh, give it a try with the automaster and, and see what are the problems and how you can uh, refine them in the later stage. So first we have used the um, edge size control uh, at defining the C and the air domain interface in order to refine the masks and uh, obtain accurate results. Um, we have, uh, we have uh, followed an iterative procedure uh, to determine the suitable mess size. And of course we have also tried before getting into the meshing process to simplify the geometry and uh, check the quality and, and lastly check the quality of the mess. So the final mesh parameters here, you can see that the, the, the mesh size, the overall mesh size is uh, 0 0.124, uh, while the edge size is uh, 0 0.6, uh, coming to a, a 1 to 5 ratio, and you can uh, uh, see the, the refinement uh, uh, in the level between the, the air and the, and the fluid domain. So. Now, uh, putting uh, uh, putting this on hold, we have um, uh, we have finalized uh, our um, uh, the setup for our fluid uh, um, uh, for our fluid problem, and now we uh, go back to uh, to see how we start with the modeling approach of of the uh, ship structure. Uh, so, as I mentioned at the beginning of this uh, uh, webinar, uh, what we try to do here is try to propose an integrated workflow, and uh, we have um, uh, we have tried to integrate uh, our um, our SIP structural modeler, uh, Big Cafe, together with uh, uh, Midas and FX. So, trying to find a workflow that is uh, very convenient uh, for uh, solving, uh, for let's say, modeling, messing, and solving uh, uh, SIP structural problems. Um, so, um, BVB Cafe, uh, short introduction, is a dedicated tool for rapid structural modeling of SIPs and offshore structures. Um, we have been using it for approach for quite a long time now, uh, also for uh, for um, research and commercial projects. Um, we have um, been creating models in CAFE uh, in order to uh, because it is uh, intended for 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 SIP structural uh, modeling and it has a function that allow you to very rapidly uh, define um, uh, the outer hull and also the internal structure uh, like uh, dedicated beams, parametric uh, stiffened panels, openings, brackets, and all other uh, structural elements related to shipbuilding. Um, so uh, when uh, modeling in, in CAFE, one could uh, of course define uh, the, the structure with a very uh, um, high precision and very quickly and uh, also it can uh, start with the initial meshing of the structure. Uh, so our proposed workflow is to start with uh, modeling in BBB CAFE, uh, do the initial meshing there and then export the model uh, directly as a mesh uh, to, to uh, Midas and FX, which we will see also uh, later on in the demonstration. Um, 
So the same IGS model that we have used uh, for um, uh, setting up our hydrodynamic analysis, uh, we uh, directly utilize it also in BFB Cafe. Uh, it is, uh, so it is, the, the process is refined in such a way that we use the same models in both softwares. So we don't have to go back and forth with uh, changing the uh, different uh, properties of the, of the geometry. Uh, we directly use the IGS, we import it in BVB Cafe and create the main structural components of our design, like main transverse, longitudinal bulkheads, double bottoms and decks. And also smaller structural elements such as deck and house stiffeners, which are modeled as uh, parametric entities uh, within BVB Cafe and can be, um, <coughs> can be altered during the design uh, process uh, if needed. Um, <clears throat> so after having uh, um, 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 an acceptable, uh, let's say, model, uh, we start with the, uh, um, so many times in sea building we, we start with using a half model in order to assess the situation and then we could, if needed, we could uh, resolve into a, into a full model. Um, so here you can see that um, the, the structural half model that we have in, in CAFE, we have created in CAFE, we now we can mesh it. Uh, CAFE also utilizes a powerful meshing algorithm uh, for uh, cell elements. <coughs> and uh, here you can see that the global mesh size for such a structure was uh, 100 millimeters. So, and uh, you can see on the later, uh, on the late, uh, on the last uh, picture that um, all properties of materials and, and thickness of, uh, of uh, plates and stiffeners are already defined uh, before uh, meshing and uh, these are data that the, project, uh, that the project file holds within it and they are also exported uh, into meters and effect later on. <coughs> Um, so we can have a visual check of the assigned thickness um, and we can have a sim similar filter for uh, plotting the profile and material properties. Um, moving on, uh, we have uh, now um, created our initial mesh and we are uh, able to export it directly uh, from, uh, from CAFE into uh, uh, and effects. And this is uh, done by utilizing the um, uh, CAFE export in uh, Nastran uh, DAT file and importing it into Midas and FX as a, as a DAT file as well. Uh, you can see that this is the, 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 the whole um, structure, the mesh structure is how it is imported in Midas and FX. So exactly as it, it was uh, seen with all properties uh, in the CAFE. And uh, what we have choos chosen to do, to do here is that uh, we have left uh, uh, merging and refinement of the of the final mesh uh, to do it within the meters and effects because also it utilizes some uh, very powerful um, um, uh, meshing uh, and uh, mesh repairing uh, functions. Um, so uh, this is uh, let's see an approach of. Uh, very quickly uh, messing your initial uh, your 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 initial uh, structural design and without uh, uh, having uh, making any precautions on the uh, uh, let's say uh, connections of the messing, so you we leave that behind and we do it later on when we import our model in in meters and effects. As you can see here, there are some. Um, uh, 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 connection refinements between the stiffeners that need to be done and uh, this is done uh, here within uh, meters and effects by uh, of course there are uh, several functions like uh, um, uh, merging, repairing and um, also refining the mess if needed and you can see here some differences between the where the, the mess uh, had to be uh, fixed and refined. Um, so after we have uh, done a first uh, round of uh, refining uh, our mass and uh, taking the connectivity of the elements, uh, we have uh, also utilized the tools uh, within Midas and FX to check the element quality and uh, the topology of the uh, of the of the mass. 
um, our let's say um, um, our approach so usually is that when we have a model ready to run, uh, we will first uh, run a simple um, um, model analysis in order to check for uh, connectivity problems or uh, non-linearity uh, problems and uh, we would then uh, follow with the uh, linear or non-linear linear static or uh, any other uh, simulation that we would have to run. Uh, you see here also that you can directly then um, utilize your mesh to um, to mirror it and have a full uh, full structure if it is needed in that case. So um, now again, having uh, having set up the uh, structural part of the of the uh, of the project, uh, we put that also on hold and we come back to the uh, um, uh, we come back to the fluid uh, part. Um, so um, uh, in the, in this uh, CFD part, we have, uh, as you seen before, we have uh, set up our domain. We have set up our mess. Uh, we have um, uh, put the initial conditions like uh, pressure distribution, and uh, the, 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 the we have a transient uh, CFD function to define a, a wave loading. As you can see, this is a sign of uh, wave loading, and uh, also we have an inlet. Um, uh, of uh, 2.42 uh, meters per second, uh, zero pressure outlet, and uh, we have also allowed the hub uh, to be uh, to to translate and rotate around the z axis in order to get uh, um, the movement in that perspective. Um, so um, we have. Um, a rather coarse mess uh, because we wanted to to uh, to get some uh, good idea on the on the on the uh, pressure distribution on the aft part as we mentioned before, and uh, we have used the symmetry, so we only have uh, half a domain uh, in this case, and the 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 results that we are uh, let's say trying to obtain from here is the pressure distribution, the total velocity. We get the level set if you want, uh, and also the total deformation of the mesh because we have also allowed the, the mesh uh, on, on the free surface to deform. Um, so we will not go into mass details into the into the CFD analysis because it really takes a lot of time to uh, to go through the uh, the, the settings uh, behind the simulation. Um, However, you could see here how we can utilize directly the analysis and uh, and uh, the results of the analysis. Uh, so, mainly speaking about the, re the pressure mapping of the of the um, of the results. So, uh, Midas uh, utilizes a variety of tools uh, for visualizing the results, uh, but also there are specific functions used to map the, the requested pressures uh, pressure forces on the hull. Uh, you could see that uh, within extract uh, results function, uh, someone could uh, directly go to, um, um, uh, to the different time steps on the um, uh, to the different uh, time steps of the simulation, uh, select it, and then get the appropriate uh, results. Uh, it's like uh, having a, a uh, uh, an Excel table that you can copy and paste into uh, different uh, parts. Uh, and utilize it as a, as an input. So, uh, copying these results, we can then uh, there is a specific specific function that allows us to to use them as a, as a loading uh, to our structural model. And this you can uh, you can see here. Uh, so we have derived the, the pressure uh, load uh, through the tables shown uh, in, in the previous slide. And uh, we have um, mapped them on our structural model and used them to perform, perform a linear static analysis. So you can see that the, uh, as we've seen before, the, the structural model that we, uh, we created uh, with uh, BVB Cafe Modeler, uh, we messed it, imported it into Midas NFX, and now it's, uh, it's ready for use uh, uh, within the Midas NFX platform. Um, we have uh, left all the constraints to be defined in Midas NFX, uh, like boundary conditions and uh, also 
or as you saw, the loading uh, de derived from the uh, CFD analysis. And um, uh, you can see here the, the results, plotted results uh, from a, a first uh, analysis uh, as total translation uh, for misses and the overall safety factor. Of course, there are numerous uh, other um, results that you can derive or insert into your uh, analysis. Um, uh, according to to what is uh, according to the problem you're solving. Um, so the um, what is the design verification based on the on the CFD loads? Uh, so what is very important um, is in mass generation is to to match the structural properties of the hull. Uh, the external loads, of course caused by hydrodynamic pressures on the ship hull. It's uh, very important to be very uh, carefully defined. And also the balance between the external and the internal loads, like weight and inertia forces, and caused by the hull structure and the cargo. Uh, so the selection of appropriate uh, uh, wave loads uh, uh, has to be uh, simulated in that way in order to define the correct uh, loading. So um, we can then uh, have a look at the um, um, at the collision investigation that we had. Uh, so as you've seen until now, we've been only utilizing the, the, the two platforms. So uh, we have and Midas and FX. We have been sharing the same uh, uh, model basis. So we have two models at the moment. We have the IGS model that we used at the beginning. Uh, we have use the same IGS model for both uh, software in order to define this, um, uh, the, the, the structural geometry and also the CFD uh, uh, computation. And then we have used also the same um, uh, FEM uh, model uh, to, uh, to derive the results uh, for the static analysis. And uh, now you can see that uh, the same uh, models, uh, we can also use it uh, for the collision investigation. Uh, so within the, the same project, we can continue uh, by, um, uh, in, in that case, we use the mirrored, uh, the full, um, uh, the full model uh, in order to be, to have a, a bit, uh, a better uh, inertia force on the, on the hull. And we are, what we are investigating here is the collision between the aft part of the structure and the pillar, which is part of, uh, which is supposedly part of an offshore structure installation. Um, so ideally, this pillar is uh, fixed in uh, space, and we assign uh, uh, through the MIDA and FX uh, tabs for the uh, for the uh, nonlinear analysis. Uh, we have the ability to um, assign an initial velocity to the tugboat model. And of course, we have to um, very carefully define um, a contact uh, between the two uh, uh, um, the two parts between the pillar and the and the tack boat. Um, so here you can see the um, um, you can see uh, that we have um, um, a nonlinear explicit uh, transient uh, solver that is working. And uh, we have, of course, uh, um, um, an array of uh, time steps, and uh, we can get uh, uh, the let's say the, uh, the penetration of the of the column into the um, into the hull uh, of the of the tack boat. And uh, here you can uh, see some initial uh, results uh, coming from this uh, uh, impact. Uh, which are also, let's say, stored into the same uh, model database, and uh, um, we we now effectively have uh, a full, um, let's say, um, analysis cycle uh, starting from the uh, uh, from the CFD part, uh, going to the structural linear static, and then following with the uh, collision impact analysis at the end, and uh, all within the same. Um, um, platforms utilizing the same models and getting the results also uh, in, in one database, being able to, uh, to plot them uh, for, uh, for um, presenting your project. What is also very important is that at any step of, any step of, the, of this uh, uh, integration, we could go back 
and uh, change the um, update our models and we run our calculations so we could go back to the uh, BBB cafe and update our um, stiffener definitions or plate thickness definitions uh, which will automatically update our, our FEM initial model and uh, finally our, our, uh, our results um, at the end. So just to conclude and then have a, a, a quick uh, look at the uh, at the actual uh, um, uh, uh, software. So we have um, several uh, pre-processing sol uh, solver and processing functionalities of MIDAS, which have been showcased uh, here. Uh, we have tried to define a workflow which works quite well without any. Uh, we didn't have any compatibility issues uh, until now. Um, of course, we can see that the additional overhead related to free structure coupling is uh, is uh, uh, it's not negligible, and um, uh, even I think with the uh, latest uh, MIDAS and FX uh, version, uh, with the uh, newest uh, one-way FSI uh, functions, this would be even easier, and uh, we would uh, probably see that in some of the coming webinars. Um, we uh, we have of course seen that uh, we need uh, higher computational resources uh, for the for the CFD simulation. But on the other hand, the FEM analysis, including the explicit analysis, are computationally inexpensive and uh, very quick to solve. And lastly, we have uh, let's say um, um, tried to uh, define this integrated approach of FEM CFD based calculations which is dedicated to uh, SIP and offshore structures. Um, so uh, let's say this is the, the, the uh, um, collaboration between the two uh, uh, software platforms and uh, considering that the integrating platform is uh, MIDAS and FX and you can have your um, uh, resulting project uh, uh, from there. So uh, thank you for the attention. I hope that um, I, I wasn't too uh, um, uh, quick, and of course I will be happy to uh, to answer to any questions. Uh, but uh, now I, I think it's a good time to to go to the uh, actual um, uh, software. Um, so MIDAS and FX. Uh, uh, environment. I, I think that uh, uh, some people must be uh, already uh, um, uh, familiar with it. Um, so we will start firstly with uh, BVB Cafe. Um, so BVB Cafe is, as I said before, a structure, a structural modeler. Um, we have the ability to um, uh, to define uh, um, uh, the hull geometry, the actual uh, the, the structural elements, as I said before, and uh, several other uh, small structural parameters. Um, so in DDB Cafe, we have uh, um, some innovative approaches uh, related to ship building uh, uh, and design, which is made mostly the uh, parametric, uh, let's say, stiffened panels that allow you to have a, a parametric uh, uh, stiffened panel defined, uh, which can be changed uh, throughout the process of the designing. Um, we have this in the same way we have parametric uh, brackets, openings, and uh, masses, materials, and plates, and also a very comprehensive uh, database of, uh, of profiles, dedicated to building profiles. Um, what I would like to show you here is that um, uh, we have uh, uh, we have defined our structural model in compromises of uh, um, either uh, strakes or surfaces in that case, and also bins that you can have here. Um, so what I would like to show you is that uh, here we can have uh, we have uh, uh, groups and model groups and. Uh, if, uh, if we turn them off, uh, you can see that also we have our uh, um, resulting mesh in, in the same project file. As it, so this is the initial uh, mesh, uh, which you can see also, I will show you uh, quickly how we can, uh, how we can derive it. Um, 
So uh, here, after having, uh, um, uh, you can also go through the uh, screening of the properties, uh, uh, like thicknesses or material. You can see material, we have the same material, and uh, uh, you can see uh, thicknesses. So you can see the different thicknesses utilized, ranging from 12 to 15, 18 uh, millimeters blades. And also, uh, you can see uh, the um, profiles. So you can screen the different profiles. So you have a T about uh, plate profiles, uh, and uh, they are defined through the database. Um, so all these uh, they are taken into account when we when we mess the our project. So what we're going to do now is that uh, here we have. Uh, um, under tools, we have um, a meshing tab, FEMS. We have an element length. So here we define the uh, uh, meshing parameters, like 100 millimeters mesh in that case. And we have also uh, several other parameters that can be controlled from this tab. Um, going back to our model, we will define a new, uh, uh, we will add a new model group. Uh, we will call it mesh uh, new. And now, just uh, uh, simply by uh, uh, Control-A, we select our whole geometry. And uh, we select the model group where we want to base our, our new mesh. And we press Mesh Selected Entities. Now, you directly see that if we, if we close the other groups and we choose the mesh new, you will see that we have uh, very quickly, we have our uh, mesh that we have requested. Um, so lastly, what I wanted to say you is, show you is that how we do, uh, also we can incorporate changes into that mesh. Uh, so if we go back to our uh, model groups, uh, we can very uh, easily uh, add some uh, new beams into the model. If we select uh, one of the beams, uh, this will be uh, default selection, and then we, will, we can uh, directly add it by selecting two points. Uh, we can uh, add, uh, uh, sorry, uh, this is, uh, I was on the wrong group, but I can do it again. So. Uh, if we select um, uh, two points again and uh, we uh, add the beam, you can see that the beam is added between the two points. We can uh, choose the the, um, uh, uh, the rotation of the beam. We can flip uh, simply the normal. So now you can see that we have done a, a change in our model and uh, we have this additional beam here but we have our mesh in this other model group. What we can do is that by selecting this uh, uh, um, model group where our mesh is, uh, we can select the new part, uh, simply uh, mesh it, and if you go back, you will see that the new beam is added into our mesh. Um, so, uh, Changes can can be can be done, let's say, inherently in this in this process. So by uh, selecting again in in this case, selecting a complete mesh model. Uh, also, I will uh, put here the uh, thickness selection, so you can see that the the, the thicknesses they have gone and properties have gone through the uh, mesh model as well. Um, by selecting the whole model and exporting, you can utilize export. And from this, uh, we can select the, uh, as I said before in my presentation, the uh, Nastron DAT file, uh, which would give us uh, a file that we can directly import into uh, Midas NFX. Okay, so this has been done, and uh, we have now our, we have exported our model, we have imported it into Midas NFX. And now we will go through some simple uh, static analysis just to get an idea. Uh, so here we have also, as I mentioned before, we have refined some parts of the mesh. Uh, we have connected some of some nodes, or we have, uh, uh, let's say, merged uh, some parts where needed. 
Um, you can see that uh, our mesh uh, sets, we have different mesh sets uh, depending on their properties. Uh, this is the cell mesh set, this is this uh, type of uh, beams, other type of beams, uh, uh, this uh, T uh, webs and uh, flanges on this mesh set. Um, so now uh, we have a model ready for uh, starting with your initial conditions. Uh, we have uh, defined some uh, generic uh, boundary conditions like uh, constraints around the model just to be able to have a quick uh, analysis. Uh, you can see the constraints, they are just uh, simply defined by uh, um, the static uh, analysis tab where you have um, you can define either a constraint, which is uh, we can, you have the selection of between fixed pin, no rotation. We also have an advanced uh, selection where you can choose different symmetric planes or uh, the or um, uh, DOFs. And also you have a constraint equation manager where you where you can uh, have more advanced uh, constraint functions. Um, in that case, we have chosen a fixed uh, constraints around the model, and now we can also define uh, static load. Um, in the same tab, we have the gravity force, we have the force definition, pressure, uh, displacements, and also uh, all, all sorts of, uh, of uh, loading and, and constraints. Um, so let's try to put up some pressure on the top of the deck. We go onto, onto this view. Um, if we want to select only elements on this top, then it's important to select uh, uh, to have the front selection only. Activate it. Uh, we choose the pressure, and then we can select objects uh, by uh, dragging our mouse and creating a selection box. You can see that we have the selected elements like that. Uh, you can use the normal or you can have a uniformly distributed load uh, by, uh, uh, let's say, having a plus or minus sign. Let's try here uh, this, and uh, then you just, you can apply. So if we now go, we can see that a uniformly distributed load acting downwards uh, because of the uh, minus sign is um, uh, is distributed on the on the top uh, deck plate. Uh, so now we have um, everything is set. So we have our model. Uh, all properties are there, uh, coming from the big affair. Uh, we have uh, constraints and uh, we have also load. Uh, what we can do is that we can just define. Uh, here we have defined two analysis. We have defined the linear static and the models, uh, if we can see uh, also later. So through linear static, we can just solve that. If you see here, uh, we have the options. We have different options for uh, meters and effects. Uh, you can find different things related to the uh, uh, boundary conditions, the uh, conventions, and also the, the, the coloring. Um, analysis and results. Here you can see the, this um, a very important feature of um, meters and effects is the uh, being able to scale your simulation into as many cores as you have available. Um, so you can select a number of processors and you can also enable the GPU acceleration if you have uh, a good, uh, uh, let's say, GPU unit on your PC. Um, so we have defined that and then we can uh, directly start uh, solving. You will see that the Midas NFX solvers is starting, and uh, it's requesting the seven uh, cores that we have defined before. And you will see that uh, it's really, uh, really quick. Uh, also, the GPU has been enabled, and it's uh, taken into consideration in, in this uh, uh, computation. And you can see that uh, the total um, CPU time was 29 seconds, real clock time is uh, 8.9 seconds, so it's uh, uh, extremely quick, I would say. Uh, and then directly we have the um, 
linear static uh, solutions. By default, we have these three. We have the total translation. We have a cell stress from misses and the cell stress safety factor. You can see the the, the displacement. Um, uh, we get this uh, uh, the uh, results bar here. Uh, we have the units. We have defined the units in meters, but you can change them at any time. Uh, Newton meters and you can change the convention if you want and from here you can animate you can animate the load pressure uh, we can also have a look at the von Mises stresses so you can see uh, here the resulting stresses you can see that we have a very good uh, connectivity of our model uh, we don't have any singularities and it's working quite well. Uh, it's also very important that the, the, the solver uh, does not work with singularity, so the, the model has to be um, uh, well prepared. Um, so you can see here the animation also of the stresses. Uh, there are several uh, other um, options in the uh, post-processing. Um, so you can have the contour lines displayed here and we can also uh, define uh, different slicing planes so uh, in, in the Z guide uh, we can add here we can add also uh, an X guide and you see that you can have so you can uh, slice your model and have specific, uh, let's say, uh, representations of the results. Uh, like here. Or if you need to, to assess some details. Um, so, um, okay, so then um, coming uh, uh, back what I wanted to also show you is that uh, and also uh, not to make this webinar too long um, we are now in the post mode uh, if you want to uh, to again uh, go through your uh, model then you have to go back to the uh, to the pre mode so we're back to our model uh, uh, something else that I wanted to show you is that uh, how you can also uh, uh, remesh uh, some part of the of the uh, um, of your initial mesh if you want to apply some loads or if you apply if you want to uh, have special consideration of some areas so uh, di directly in meters and effects we can use the remesh function uh, you can select by triangle quad try and quad um, options and uh, then change the element uh, size so in that case uh, you can also measure from here if you uh, you have a 0 0.1 uh, we can narrow that down to 0.5 and I'm glad we can select uh, an area and then apply mm -hmm. okay, sorry this was the do that again. So 0 0.5. Um, yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. So you can see here that uh, according to what we have defined, we have uh, um, um, a remeshing part. Uh, you, you can utilize that. You can have. Um, you can use your uh, keep boundary node. Uh, choose the element size, uh, mesh type, triangle quad, and uh, triangle quad, and then remesh the appropriate parts. Um, this is something that can be done either in meters and effects, or a model can come directly, uh, uh, let's say, updated through a big, big affair and import it again into meters and effects uh, with the same, uh, uh, having the same boundary conditions as defined and being rerun uh, at the end. Um, so lastly, I will also show you that uh, uh, we have we can also we have defined the model analysis here. Uh, so by, for defining an analysis, by going to the analysis case, we have all different options like linear, static, nonlinear model, 
backlink uh, heat transfer and the CFD also as well. Uh, here we have defined the model analysis and uh, if we start solving that so again the uh, solver is launched uh, it requests the course that we have defined mm. yep and uh, it's done so you see also that this is extremely quick uh, 21 uh, seconds work clock time and we what we get as a result is we get the different uh, modes uh, we can also define that uh, the modes or frequency that we run beforehand but here we just left it uh, to, to run and you can directly get the uh, total uh, translations into uh, uh, different modes uh, you, know, you can see up to the tenth modes and uh, you still have the you have the animations and different uh, post-processing results. Okay. So just to to recap, uh, you have seen uh, the approach uh, coming from the uh, different uh, um, uh, different type of uh, of solvers, uh, starting from the CFD. And then to the uh, going to uh, to the uh, linear static, and finally the, the explicit analysis. Um, we we have uh, let's say we have tried to show that uh, it's uh, uh, possible uh, to have an integrated solutions utilizing the same IGS model, utilizing the same uh, FEM model between um, uh, BVP Cafe and Midas and FX. And finally, uh, let's say, um, uh, concluding into results and being able to, uh, to access your, uh, your design through the different steps and uh, reiterate and also change your geometry parameters uh, or uh, thickness parameters, which is very important also in the, in the uh, ship design process sometimes. Um, so I, I think that um, I will um, I will not um, uh, want to make this uh, webinar too long uh, for you. Uh, so um, I think that um, this uh, concludes uh, the the whole uh, idea, the integration idea, and um, I will be happy to uh, to to uh, respond to any questions or. And uh, also, or, or discuss something more specific if if it's needed. So, thank you very much for your attention, and uh, we'll be happy to um, uh, to talk to you. Yes, um, so we have this um, first question, uh, if it is uh, possible to, uh, to optimize the cell thickness uh, in meters and effects. This is actually quite an in, uh, quite interesting uh, approach, uh, so um, there are options in, uh, in meters and effects where there is, uh, let's say, the uh, optimization uh, tabs where you could actually uh, set a set, have a set of, of uh, parameters, uh, which are the, the, let's say, in that case, the thickness parameters, and uh, uh, run an, an optimization mode on, on this and uh, trying to refine it by selecting the appropriate results in a loop. Uh, so this is a very interesting approach, and I think especially for uh, projects in the SIP design, in this early stage, it's uh, very nice to utilize uh, cell thickness optimization, and uh, hopefully we would have uh, uh, something to to show uh, on that topic uh, soon, uh, because it's also very interesting for us.
Okay, so if there are any other questions. Okay, so I can see now. Um, so, um, can CAFE support modeling of combined stiffness plate and bar? Yes, uh, that's uh, a very basic uh, function uh, of uh, of that. Um, so, uh, uh, and also uh, the second question: What type of analysis does CAFE support itself? So, basically, uh, CAFE is a chip structural modeler and preprocessor is not a, a solver on its own. So. This is why we are also integrating the two platforms. Um, uh, so, uh, in in one side, the cafe is, uh, um, let's say, uh, offering its uh, very uh, um, uh, rapid and uh, structural processes, uh, design processes, uh, which are dedicated to the marine industry. And on the other hand, Midas and FX uh, um, offers the um, the very uh, robust uh, uh, solver and pre and uh, post processing uh, uh, capabilities and uh, the, so the integration is uh, let's say uh, that's the in why the integration is very um, uh, interesting um, uh, so plate and bar yes this is uh, also very uh, as I said it's a basic function we we have uh, all type of elements. Um, and uh, also depending on the on the mass uh, quality that you want or the the mass uh, size more uh, correct, uh, you can have um, uh, uh, beams. Uh, you you can have beams that they're modeled as the, as cell elements and uh, rod elements or or or, uh, or bars depending on on your size. Um, Yes, uh, this uh, also another question uh, regarding if it's possible to prepare a vibration analysis, uh, so uh, response based on the fluid structure interaction. This is possible, uh, although it is not, let's say, automated. It has to be done uh, by uh, some specific process, and results uh, results from the fluid have to be uh, uh, carefully uh, mapped into the uh, to the structure. Uh, this is uh, this is possible, and um, it is also let's say uh, a matter of uh, preparing well your uh, your uh, fluid uh, model because the structural model is more or less straightforward in that case. Um, underwater noise analysis, uh, I think it's not an option for the moment because it requires more. Uh, uh, a sophisticated, uh, let's say, acoustics uh, CFD uh, uh, specific solver. Um, but FSI, it's uh, it is possible, and also I think that uh, we will now uh, have a look at the a new feature of Midas and FX with the one-way FSI in order to utilize it in this workflow and try to update it. Um, Yes, we have uh, we have done uh, we have experience in uh, in uh, noise propagation uh, that comes from uh, sea propellers. Um, uh, although we haven't uh, used uh, yet the uh, um, uh, MIDA CFD code uh, on on this uh, uh, let's say um, uh, type of analysis, but it would be uh, I, uh, we think that it is possible, and uh, we would be interested to to uh, to let's say. To form a workflow for also for this type of uh, problems in the future. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, and uh, I see another last question that the, the last transversal beam is not on, I, I, it's not in the post processing here. Um, that that was the, because we didn't uh, in that case we didn't uh, update update our, our model uh, while we were showcasing it, but uh, it was just um, uh, let's say uh, trying to show how how it is done. Um, updating in the one side, but we, we forgot to update it also on the other side. Uh, but uh, this is, um, let's say, possible in the, uh, to do uh, in the normal workflow. Um, okay, so I see some other questions. Um, uh, is it possible to perform modular dynamic analysis such as random vibration or harmonic analysis by extracting the results from... Uh, yes, uh, this is also uh, uh, possible uh, within the uh, uh, within Medias and FX. It's also, let's say, a separate workflow uh, which is uh, uh, utilizes the same um, uh, the same principles. So extracting the uh, the loads, the extracting the, the the pressures or the loads from the a static analysis and then uh, uh, using them to to uh, to have a dynamic or let's say harmonic analysis uh, uh, on the on the later stage. So this is also uh, possible in this uh, on on for for C building projects. Um, how are st how the Stephen panels are realized in NFX? Um, so. Um, the different panels within uh, within uh, BVB Cafe, they are defined as uh, parametric uh, modules. Uh, that they are, uh, at the end they are messed, so they are they are defined as uh, when we export them, we are defined as regular uh, cell elements. And the 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 deck plating is of course always a cell element, but the stiffeners they can be uh, let's say either uh, um, beams uh, or they can be also. Uh, we can have the uh, the main member as a cell element and also and the flange as a beam, or we can have complete stiffener as a as a cell element. So the difference is that this uh, depends on the meshing size uh, of uh, that you choose. So if you have a very coarse mesh, then you can define the whole stiffen panel uh, from uh, cell elements, and it will be exported into uh, and imported into Midas and effects like that. If you have um, uh, sorry, if you have a fine mess, this will happen. And if you have a coarse mess, then you can, uh, let's say, uh, have um, a deck plating that is defined by cell elements, and then stiffeners defined as uh, as rods and beams. Uh, under the model analysis so um, okay so refining the uh, under deck area this is also possible uh, So of course uh, you can uh, utilize the uh, uh, at any time the uh, uh, remesh function uh, by selecting uh, appropriate uh, uh, let's say elements. In that case, I will just randomly uh, select this area here uh, and one. Uh, so we have triangle quote triangle quote. So apply. So you can see that here. 
we have a quite quite refined uh, mesh. We can we have kept the boundary uh, uh, nodes, and uh, I mean it's of course up to the user to 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 choose uh, what he wants to refine and uh, what would be the maximum element size or the mesh type in, in that case. Okay. Yep, the pre-model analysis. This is um, uh, 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 this is uh, let's say um, oh, what what this is in a case. Yeah. So I'm trying to see if uh, there are some other questions. Uh, yes, we haven't. Uh, we have used uh, thermal uh, stress analysis, uh, um, but not for a fire simulation. Um, but uh, of course, if someone has the, uh, the 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 correct boundary conditions coming from a fire simulation, then uh, I, I think that this would be uh, possible to do. Uh, we have uh, mainly used thermal stress analysis for, uh, uh, let's say, uh, heated uh, tanks on, on ships or heated uh, uh, heating coils and or, or fluids inside uh, tanks, but uh, not for fire simulation because it will require, let's say, very uh, very good um, um, uh, initial conditions regarding the fire. The fire. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, thank you very much for attending and uh, for all the uh, uh, good questions. Uh, of course, I have to indicate that this is, uh, let's say, a simple demonstration uh, of the integration, uh, and uh, let's say for um, um, a commercial uh, a project, uh, of course, a lot of uh, refinement has to be done and a lot of uh, additional work to uh, to um, uh, make your uh, your project as as accurate as possible. And uh, all the tools are there, so it's up to the to the user to to um, um, uh, actually uh, conclude on what he wants to use and how he wants to use it. So, okay, thank you very much, and uh, I'll be happy to to uh, answer any questions also in person. You can uh, uh, you can direct them to me or or uh, to uh, directly to me the same effects people. Thank you.